Think you're smart about food storage? Oh, I thought I was too. But then I discovered I was doing it all wrong. When I first started emergency food storage, I was obsessed by shelf life. My goal was to have a stash that would last 10 years or more. From number 10 cans of freeze-dried goods to buckets filled with beans, rice, and wheat berries, I thought I was crafting the perfect survival food storage. But I discovered a lot of crucial mistakes, and I wanted to share them with you so you don't make the same ones. Let's go upstairs where the light is a little better. You know, purchasing freeze-dried food is expensive. And even if you have your own freeze dryer, it was a substantial investment. So aiming for long-term, you know, decade-long food storage is expensive and it takes up a lot of space. And in addition, you have to make sure that that space is climate controlled to maximize your food storage. Again, additional costs. Now, packaging breakdown. You know, over time, there's more chances, more risks of having a tear in your package or something happening and your stored food for long term might go bad. The longer you store it, the greater your risk. And talking about problems with packaging, well, you have increased contamination too, right? Pests, it could be bugs in it, or it could be mice or rats nibbling on those Mylar bags or whatever you have it stored in and ruining your entire supply. And you have to think about packaging breakdown. The longer you store something, the more at risk you are for having something happening to your packaging. Let me give you an example. I had stored I believe it was legumes in a bucket with a gamma seal. And I have to admit, it probably had been 12 months since I checked my storage. I checked that area and lo and behold, there was a crack in the seal. So what was stored in that bucket wasn't gonna last nearly 10 years. And you've got contamination risk. You know, it could be what's ruining your packaging are pests either inside the bag itself or mice or rats nibbling at it. And that can ruin the entire food item that you had stored long term. And even if they, you've been very, very good, none of that has happened. But are you really able to maintain the temperatures required to store your food long term? I know many of us cannot. So to me, what I call the store and forget method gives you a false sense of security. You say, hey, down there, I got everything I need. I'm not worried, but maybe you should be. Hi, I'm Prepper Pori, and I make videos about food storage and cooking and gardening on a lot of variety of subjects. And if you're interested, I hope you subscribe and hit that alert button. It is really, really appreciated. And if you like this video, a thumbs up. After really reviewing my plan, you know, my decade long storage plan, I decided that, yeah, there were some problems with it. And I didn't really think it was that practical. Instead, I'm trying to build my food storage with items that last two to three years and then rotate, rotate, rotate through my food storage. And by doing this, my pantry, and yours too, if you decide to do this, will be strategically optimized for your everyday life and for any emergencies. I mean, it's just much more cost effective. I don't need expensive Mylar bags or buckets with gamma lids or a vacuum sealer, even though I love my vacuum sealer and I would still use it for everything that I freeze. But you get the idea. You don't need it if you're rotating every one to three years through your food supply. And what I think is that this way of food storage gives you a much more diverse diet. One of the things I noticed is that I didn't have much fruit and not nearly enough vegetables in my long-term storage. You know, my family loves pineapple, but Pineapple in a can 
tin can, you know, it only lasts so long. So it wasn't part of my long-term food storage. But if I'm doing this rotational method, I can rotate it through in two years and there are no problems. And that's just one example of much more diverse stuff you could keep because many items will not keep for 10 years, no matter how well you preserve them. And of course, this is going to maintain food quality much better than the 10 year or longer storage method. Because no matter how well you store something, eventually it will lose nutrition. So it would have lost less in two years compared to 10 plus years. Well, I don't know about you, but family needs can change. And they might not be the same 10 years from now as they are now. I mean, you could have a family member develop diabetes, so they need a little bit different diet. Or maybe one of your family members becomes a vegan or gets the alpha gal syndrome, which is if you get bit by that certain tick, you are allergic to eating meat and dairy for a period of time, these things could happen. So this way, if you are continually rotating your stock, you can adapt your food storage to the needs of your family. So switching to the, what I call the two to three year rotation food storage, it isn't just about avoiding those long-term pitfalls. It's really a proactive approach. It prioritizes the quality, safety, and variety of your food storage. And most importantly, it enhances your emergency preparedness. It really ensures that your food supply, your pantry, is a source of food security and comfort for your family. So by embracing this method, you're really investing in your family's well-being and peace of mind. Like I said, I'll still keep my just-in-case apocalyptic buckets of beans and rice and grains and my freeze-dried food that I already bought, but I am not buying any more freeze-dried food, nor am I storing things with the intention of keeping them for 10 plus years. To me, that's just not practical. So let's make food storage work for us by keeping our pantries relevant, nutritious, and ready for any emergency. So do you rotate your food supply? And here's more debunked myths about food storage. <laughs>